In this lecture, I'm going to show you how we can get around the issue of cores by using JSONP in Angular. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know what JSONP is and how it overcomes cores. And you're also going to know how to make JSONP requests in Angular. Now, JSONP is a method of performing API requests which go around the issue of cores. Now, just as a reminder, cores is a security measure implemented in all browsers that stop you from using an API in a potentially unsolicited way. And most APIs, including the iTunes API, are protected by it. And because of cores, if we try to make a request to the iTunes API URL with the HTTP client library, the browser would issue a cores error. The explanation is deep and complex, but a quick summary is that unless an API sets certain headers in the response, a browser will, will reject the response. The iTunes API we use doesn't set those headers, so by default, any response gets rejected. And so far in this section, we've solved this problem by installing a Chrome plugin, which intercepts the response and adds the needed headers, tricking the browser into thinking everything is okay, but it's not really a solution you can use if you want to release your application to the public. In front of you right now is the observable version of our application. I'm going to open up the console. I'm going to clear it and I'm going to switch off the plugin that I installed. And now if I search, we see an error printed to the console, specifically XML H, um, HTTP request, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No access control allow origin header is present. This is the error that you get when you when the browser rejects a response because it doesn't have the right headers. And JSONP is a solution to this problem. It treats the API as if it was a JavaScript file, essentially. Let me just have somewhere where I can type. JSONP basically treats the API as if it was a JavaScript file and it dynamically adds the request to the API as if it were a script tag in our HTML. So essentially, essentially it dynamically adds, in essence, a script tag to our HTML with the source being the API request. Now, the browser just downloads the JavaScript file. And since browsers don't check for cores when downloading JavaScript files, it works around the issue of cores. Now, imagine if the response from the server, if the response from the API was just the text, hello, or just the JSON, hello world. So when we request this to be downloaded as a JavaScript file, Imagine it just returned this response here. Now, that's not ideal because the browser would download this. It would think it's a JavaScript file and it would try and execute it. But it's not JavaScript, it's just an object. Nothing actually ends up happening. We want to do something with the JSON once it's downloaded. Ideally, call a function passing it the JSON data. So APIs that support JSONP don't just return JSON, they actually return something that looks like JavaScript. For instance, it might return something that looking like this. So we have a function called process response and to process response is passing an object literal. So when the browser tries to download our API file as a script tag, it would then download this text, it would then execute it as JavaScript, and it will then basically try and call a function somewhere on our application called process response and pass it the actual response from the API. Now, of course, we need a function called process response ready and waiting in our application for this to work. But if we are using a framework like that supports JSONP and Angular supports JSONP, these details are handled for us. So that's JSONP in a nutshell. We treat the API as a JavaScript file. 
The API then wraps the JSON response in a function, a function whose name we define. And then when the browser downloads the fake API script, it runs it, it calls the function, passing it the JSON data. But we can only use JSONP when the API itself supports JSONP. It needs to return the JSON response wrapped in a function and it usually lets us pass in the function name we want as one of the query parameters. Also, we can only use it for get requests. It doesn't work for put, post, or delete requests. So now we know a little bit about JSONP, and since the iTunes API supports JSONP, let's refactor our observable application to one that uses JSONP instead. Now, for the most part, the functionality is the same as our HTTP example, but we use another client library called JSONP, and the providers for our JSONP solution is in the JSONP module. So firstly, let's import the new JSONP module and replace all instances of HTTP with JSONP. So now we import JSONP module and JSONP from Angular HTTP. And then when we go to the ng module, I now want to import the JSONP module instead of the HTTP module. And now let's change our search service to use the JSONP client library instead of the HTTP client library. So I'm going to have a private property called JSONP, which is of type JSONP. And then instead of calling this.http.get, we call this.jsonp.request. So with JSONP, it only has one function called dot .request, not dot .get. And we also need to change our APA URL slightly and add in another query parameter called callback. Now, just as an important note, the iTunes API supports JSONP. We just need to tell it what name to use as the function via the callback query parameter. Now we passed it a string JSONP callback. Angular will actually replace that string JSONP callback with an automatically generated function name every time we make a request. And that's it, that's all we have to do. Um, let's rerun our application. Clear the console. Everything's looking good, let me search for love and it works perfectly. And the important difference is now we are not using cores. We have not switched on this plugin. This plugin is switched off. So, so by using JSONP, we're now bypassing any issues related to cores. So to summarize, JSONP is a common solution in the web world to get around the issue of cores. We can only use JSONP with APIs that support JSONP. And to use JSONP in Angular, we use the JSONP client library, which is configured by importing the JSONP module and adding it to our ng module imports. And we make a JSONP request by calling the request function. It still returns an observable. So for the rest of our application, the fact they're using JSONP instead of HTTP should be invisible.